Hello, Rim of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon is growing all around the world. This is episode number 347. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hey, everybody. Here we are at the most important week of the year, in my opinion. Uh, Time to reflect and the time to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. Absolutely. And you know, contrary to to Christian tradition, the Passover, uh, the week that Jesus gave his life for us, was actually on a Wednesday. And when he said that he was going to, and this has been, uh, in fact, I've got a letter on file from another ministry they got from the the U.S. Naval Observatory that was able to confirm that it was on a uh, Wednesday that year. That uh, when when Jesus said, I'm going to be in the ground for three full days, it was three full days, Mary. And the Bible says that before the sun rose, the tomb was empty. So he actually rose from the dead sometime between uh, sunset on Saturday night and, and sunrise on Sunday morning. And God is very particular about what he gives it as far as prophetic examples. And uh, there's nothing good about Good Friday. It was actually a good Wednesday that year, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And there's so many pagan things that get woven into this. You know, I spend a lot of this week not only uh, searching myself, you know, looking for things that need to be resolved, things that need to be changed and brought under the blood of Jesus, but I I pray a lot for little children that are, uh, you know, going to be hunting Easter eggs and things like that. Most people probably think it would be insignificant, but it's not. Um, It's huge, as a matter of fact, um, in the power that's built in the kingdom of darkness. And so you can join with me this week, and let's pray for God's mercy to cover the little children and and the churches that are... um, you know, a lot of them are using this as, as an outreach. That's a reason a lot of them have Halloween parties and things like that. But uh, it sure is concerning when you see the plots and schemes of the enemy just unfold in front of your eyes with these things. But the good news is, is we serve a risen Savior. We do. That and he, The Almighty God loved us enough that he literally, the, the book of, of Philippians or Colossians tells us that uh, he emptied himself of his divine privilege and became a man like Mm -hmm. us and dwelt among us and gave his life for us. And just the, I don't think that we really think through the, the power of that, that he was the one that was done wrong. He was, he was the one that falsely accused, you know, falsely accused. uh, But going all the way back to the beginning, man sinned against him. He was, he was the one that was the, Man was the guilty party, not God. Well, and you know, during that time, everything came out. <laughs> during, during that time, we found out uh, what Judas was. We found out that Peter was going to deny him. We found out, you know, it was, there's something about the power that is involved with the whole um, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, this season that we're in. It just, all the things that are hidden come to the surface. And it doesn't matter what somebody says, it comes to the surface. You know, the it took a long time for the uh, Hunter Biden thing to come to the surface. Even, even though it was there all along, there, were, there was proof, people had seen it. But the media said, oh, there's nothing to it. Russian misinformation, all this stuff. But see, it's, it's bubbling up. And, um, Boy, they sure didn't do that about the dossier against Trump. No. No, they no. didn't. Until recently, then, <laughs> then they had to admit that it was all fabricated. Well, and you know, um, I don't have any any doubt about the problems with the former president. I'm, you know, I used to be worried a lot about the people that would come and be spiritual advisors to him. I used to be concerned about, you know, one of the spiritual leaders that he listened to was a Freemason, you know, in his early years. And so there are a lot of things there. But but I've seen this with my eyes: the kingdom of darkness hates him. Yeah. For some reason, <laughs> you know, and I don't, I don't have any doubt about about the things that have been said about him, but but I just I take a lot of uh, 
satisfaction in the fact that God can take a person, you know, just like he yeah. took Esther's king husband and and saved his people. And um, we're, we're kind of in that, that kind of time, you know, like back in Egypt, the first Passover, God revealed every god that they worshipped and their defeat right in front of them. And Mike's going to go into some detail on that in a little bit. But we're kind of like that here. Uh, he's revealing what God's are ruling over America. And it's real, really clear that free, Freemasonry made a smooth transition from the ancient uh, Egyptian gods to America. Mm-hmm. They made, they patterned Washington, D.C. to just fit them, just welcomed them in. Might have been, might as well have had a big banner out there saying, come on in, come on in, we've built it for you. Well, I think what they did is the, uh, the kings of Europe, uh, they tried to use the Bible to say they had the divine right to rule. That was, that was one of the things that, and they, they misquoted the book of Romans, where when it's actually talking about you know kings and rulers, it's actually talking about principalities and powers. But they, they misused that, and so the Masons, to counter that, they were, of course they were deep in the mystery religions, went back to a greater ancient power they thought more ancient. They went all the way back to Egypt. And uh, many uh, researchers believe that the very first pharaoh of Egypt was Nimrod. Mm, makes sense, and, doesn't uh, it? Because <laughs> when you look at his, his brother and, or his, his, uh, his uncle, Miserium, and his father, Cush, to actually help found Egypt. So it's kind of all in the family kind of thing that both Babylon and Egypt flow from the same rotten root well and and they use that to pattern a lot of what they're doing today they do uh uh, dr tom horn and his research found out that when they had the obelisk in place and they had the uh rotunda the dome that the masons ever since george washington have been doing the exact same ritual that was spoken over the king of egypt for him to become the pharaoh where he became the embodiment of osiris well they have that that's set up in in the occult. Mm-hmm. They've got it set up in several different ways, but that's that's one of the. There's a pharaoh over America, mm-hmm. and so you know, just like in back then, you know, the patterns repeat themselves, and God revealed the truth right in front of of the Egyptians. You know, he he showed them here are the gods that you worship. Yeah. Watch me take them down, and uh, he always gives a time of mercy for a time to turn. Before there's destruction, and I, and that's where we're at today. Um, well, I, I think just look at you know you you mentioned about God revealing and everything. I, I think right now all the leaven is getting all the hidden leaven is being mm-hmm. revealed by God. Now the news media is scrambling to try to cover it, but you can't cover it up when God well, and, reveals it. And even in Ukraine, and we are praying for for all the people. Um, this is a horrible war, but but there's things they're hidden. That in this unraveling, we're going to find out more later. We'll, we're going to be shocked, I think, at what is revealed. Well, I, with Dr. Mike Spalding, I did a show with him yesterday, and they and the Calvary Chapel has churches in the Ukraine. And he wouldn't go into a lot of it, but he says, what I'm getting from the boots on the ground is different than what they're sharing in the media. Well, you can't ever trust our media. No. I mean, that's been proven time and time again. That's why I just watch it to see... What lies are going to be perpetrated today? It's just, it's really, it's hard to even watch. Yeah. I don't do it very much, but every once in a while, I, I need to see what they're saying so we can pray. Well, Mary's pet name for the for the mainstream media are the false prophets of Baal. Well, and, they, they are. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, um, back in, you think about when they were in Egypt, you know, all those years, and it took them a long time to even cry out for deliverance. And so my thought is, is this same occult power that they're using to uh, control people today, mind control, was going on back then. Mm-hmm. And God always raises up a deliverer. Absolutely. You know, he had to, he had to work on Moses, had to, had to get him ready. There are people getting raised up all over the place. And, and you know, that's, that's what gives me such hope is there are modern-day types of Moses, Elijahs, Esthers, Deborahs. And, you know, we can reason this together. Would God raise up so many warriors against these ancient gods of Egypt and Babylon 
if there was not a, a war to be fought, a spiritual war and a victory ahead. Oh, absolutely. You know, the when John the Baptist came on the scene, he came in, in what's known as the spirit of Elijah or the prophetic anointing of Elijah. And we also know that Elijah's, that, that spirit is going to be released upon God's people mm-hmm. before Jesus comes back. And I think we're beginning to see the beginnings of that, of, of true prophetic where it's going after the power of Jezebel, well, it's going after these false gods. There will, you know, in this revealing, we're gonna we'll see at the end of this who are the true prophets and who are the false ones. It's yeah. going to be revealed as part of what's going on, and I think there are more and more things coming out about different churches. And you know, God takes it seriously when his his new uh, baby Christians come in, and what some of these churches are teaching them, Mike, is so damaging. He's going to be rocking and rolling these places. It is. Uh, because they, they, deserve, they deserve some truth to be built upon, the, the firm foundation of the truth of God's Word. Well, that and they, they're, they're, it's a lot of times it simply is just enough to placate the flesh, to make you feel like you've done something where you can call yourself spiritual when all it is is a placebo. Mm-hmm. And uh, God's calling for depth. And I, I think there's a lot of ministries that God's raising up uh, Mike Spalding is, is with his uh, ministry where he's you know teaching the word and stuff. He's experiencing the same thing we are. He said my my virtual congregation is is much much larger than my local one because there's so many people out there that are waking up that are hungry, Mary. Well, and that's that's why it's so spread out. Yeah, you know there there are some here in the Ozarks, but the vast majority of the people are all over the world. All over the and world. we are so thank thank you guys so much faithful supporters of the ministry we're just we're blown away constantly and they've got the ceilings up they've got the f- almost all the flooring in and almost all the lighting in and so it is looking good and we'll we'll try to get some pictures up soon so you can see the progress and it's just going right yeah. along and the flooring Mary picked is so pretty and well it uh, it just it just looks beautiful that's a, not not because of what I picked, I'm just saying God's provided us a beautiful place. Well, she and has she has a designer eye, and so I, I've learned to rely on that. She sometimes she uh, I'll, I'll, I'm the kind of you know I'm just a basic guy. I get up in the morning and I put on an outfit, and, and that doesn't quite match. And so I, I've kind of learned over the years. But uh, she does. The God has given her a good decorating eye, and it I I, I can't wait uh, until we're to the place where. Her and stuff, you can get decorating over there. I think it's going to be just awesome. I was it's sitting, going to be country. I was sitting in the night last night, and I I was up in the night praying and laying there, and and I had this thought. I thought I want to have some treats for kids, you know, and the people that are there, and I want it to be healthy. And I I thought I'm going to look on see if I can find, you know, those little things where you can make popsicles. Mm-hmm. They have actually kinds now that aren't like the they have a, a plastic that doesn't have the BPAs and all that junk, and I thought that could be a good treat if I would make the the peanut butter chocolate smoothies that I make with a banana. Ooh, you could make the, the berry kind and have those like little healthy popsicles. So it's it's rolling in my mind, guys. I'm gonna get it there. We just we just gotta still get some planning done. But between that and the sliders, we're gonna have we're gonna hey, have something a little good. We're to gonna eat. have some yeah. good stuff. I gotta have some practice time over there, but I can do it. <laughs> But it's it's. Uh, I want to take pictures. Um, I know that once they get the flooring and other probably the last thing that's going to go in are the cabinets because those they're they're having to yeah, make. Yeah, it for takes the space. a while to make them. And uh, the guy that was making them said May, and and uh, both I and the contractor are scratching our heads, saying first of May and to May. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to know. And but. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping maybe next week we may actually see some appliances going in the kitchen. I think we will. And I looked, you know, the bathrooms are just bare, painted walls and floors. But it's hard to tell until they get the lights all in there. They're, I was worried about them not being big enough because I'm thinking, these are big crowds. We've got to have big bathrooms. And we would have two sets of them, you know, the one back near the educational wing and the ones up front. But they're going to be plenty big enough. I looked in there and I thought, oh, yay. So I started thinking <laughs> about, you know, the... Uh, there's there's some of the have you guys ever went in public bathrooms and they've got these 
the toilet paper dispensers, and it's, it's like almost impossible to get the toilet paper out. I thought, I'm not having those. I know exactly what I want in there, the kind of paper towel dispensers. Uh, I'm going to look and see if we can get the automatic soap dispensers. You just put your yeah. hand under it. Yeah. It'd make it a lot easier for me. I, I think our contractors learned that because when I was talking with the last week, he said, he said, normally we just put this stuff in, but you know what? You pick what you want. He said, I have learned let the people pick what they want, and we'll install it. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> so thank you, guys. We yeah. appreciate We love you so much. And looking forward to these conferences when we can hug your necks and, and feel the presence of the Lord in that place because I, I know it's going to be there. God doesn't do this for nothing. Yeah, He's got a plan for his purposes. I've been, uh, was it yesterday or the day before when it wasn't raining, I was over there and uh, just doing some of my walking, and I actually went outside and walked because it was nice. And I was able to walk the entire perimeter and just praying over mm. it and consecrating it to God. Yeah, you just have a couple of times around that property, and you'd have it in, wouldn't you? Oh, <laughs> you'd go over the where the parking lot's going to be. I, I did it about five times, and I came back in because it started really getting windy. But uh, it's it's uh, I know God's going to move there, and I know it with all my heart. And I know this is this is something that uh, God has put on our heart for uh, for us to do, and. Uh, there's just an expectation, Mary. I think it's an expectation that uh, it's what he's going to do is more than what we can do, which then you know it's God. Yeah, we, we couldn't do anything. Yeah. I guarantee we could. I mean, you can teach the word. That's always an important thing. Um, but it's got to be God's presence. It's got to be God's presence. And, and we're going to need it. You know, I've <laughs> talked to uh, some people in this area that I know had the vaccine. And, boy, they're, they're already having some troubles, guys. And it's just, it's just heartbreaking. But, but my thought is, we get the presence of the Lord in that place. People can walk in there, and their bodies can be restored. You know, that's that's something I think a lot about this season, is restoration power. Yeah. You know, and, and thinking about that, I remember listening to Bill Snublin as he was dealing with uh, uh, people that were UFO abductees and everything, and they would pray over them, and the bodies, their bodies literally rejected the implants, and they would work up out of their skin. Mm-hmm. Well, if God can do it with that, he can do it with anything that anybody's jabbed into our bodies. He can do the same thing. We just, well, just got to trust him and begin believing him for that. You know, I was thinking this week about a preacher that I heard talking one time, and, and a woman called him frantic, and her husband had been in the occult, and he was trying to get out, and, and he ran to their house, and he said that it, something had him lifted up in the air and was bending him the wrong way. You know how, like, we bend over, it was bending him the other way, like trying to break his back right and so um i mean this it's no little thing what what goes on in the occult it's not these things that are going on in our nation are big but you know what (laughs) no power greater than the love of jesus when he went to that cross no love greater than that you know and we one of the things i was thinking about yesterday and this in a sense kind of goes on with with what we're talking about there are ebbs and flows to the presence of God. I've talked about that for years. But I, I don't think I've really understood the full purpose of it. I know that well, like when, when he pulls back, we're supposed to push forward. Mm-hmm. Okay, because the Bible says that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So there's right. times when he backs off, we push in. But at the same time, in the, in the times that he backs off, his enemies get arrogant. They do, and, he's, and that's and he's what we've seen them in up the United for States. Yeah. And he's setting them up for judgment. Well, and you know, um, our former Governor Greitens here in Missouri, uh, he stepped down, and it was a Soros appointed judge that mishandled it. And that has even come out this week. Yeah, and, and, and a prosecuting attorney, um, too. Uh, no, it was, it, that's what I meant to say. I said judge, but it was prosecuting attorney. And so all that's coming out. It's like everything that they've been doing all this time, dirty deeds, underhand, and, you know, all it takes is, is all the, the billions of dollars that Soros has, and he can, it's pretty pitiful, but you can kind of buy what you want in politics. Yeah. <clears throat> and God's getting ready to turn that around. We've got so many people, Mike, that are even down at the school board levels are running for office that never have before. We just recently here in Springfield, Missouri, uh, two conservatives won. On the school board, it was huge because they they were fighting the whole uh, critical race theory being taught, which is which is not what it sounds like. You know, everyone needs to know that 
that racism is horrible, but that's not what that entails. And so every every election that's won where you've got people in there that are trying to do right, um, these midterms that are coming up, we need to be praying over them. People act like politics isn't important. These are the people making the laws that we're, we're getting thrown left and right with. Yeah, We've did. got to pray that God raises up his people to take these positions. From the local level, we'll just look in areas where uh, Soros has really targeted the prosecuting attorneys. They're not prosecuting the criminals, and, and crime is just going through the roof. And the, and then you can see that over and over again in many of these Democrat held cities. And and uh, I I pray for the people because the citizens, the people that live there, are the ones that are paying the price for whatever agenda that's going on. Well, and even though we've got this administration, if we could turn it in the midterms, they control funding. Yeah. So you can just do a limited amount of harm if you can't fund these things. And that's that's been an issue in Washington forever. And I, I just think God's it's bubbling all to the surface because he's saying, this is what God is saying very loudly, very clearly. you got to stop this stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's up to his people to step up and try to stop it. That that brings mercy on the scene. If we just sit back and lack a day's go and just say, well, there's nothing we can do. This is just God's will. And, you know, then that's that's exactly the attitude the old enemy wants us to have. But if we raise up and say, we're not taking this another day. We're going to protest. We're going to stand up. We're going to speak out against this evil. And see, then God backs it up. That's what's going on as people are praying. It wasn't that the people didn't pray in that last, last election. It's that God used it to reveal all the, the hidden corruption. And to wake up a whole lot more people. Right. Because I, I think there was a good number of awakened, but it's like uh, people across the board saying, hey, numbers don't add up. This whole thing just does not well, add up. And what, like fish on ice. What will get the general population's attention more than anything else is the money problems. Yeah. And the inflation, I mean, you, you can just see the packages are getting smaller, the prices are going up, and it's this is the worst I've seen in years. Well, just, just look, in one year, we went from not only energy independence and being mm-hmm. independent, we were one of the largest exporters of energy in the world. Mm-hmm. So in less than one year, we've gone from that to begging Saudi Arabia and dictators to pump more oil. Uh Things like that don't happen by accident. And so it, it, I, I think it's, and it's causing all this ripple effect. Farmers is costing more. In fact, many of them didn't plant uh, in, the, in the very early spring because gas was too high. They, could, they couldn't make a profit, and so they didn't plant at all. And uh, everything has ripple effects that, well, that's right. that uh, I think they know what they're doing because oh. no, nobody is, is this, this. This is planned, every yeah. bit of it. Every bit of it's planned, and uh, why don't why don't you show us these gods that were defeated in Egypt? And let's see if we can see a correlation between then and now. You know, one of the things that um, whenever you read um, Genesis and Exodus, and you and you and when you like Passover is about ninety five percent fulfilled all the prophetic stuff, but there is prophetic imagery in it that that you can extrapolate over to the book of Revelation. God took down the Pharaoh that was built on the mystery religions that had his people in prison, that had his people enslaved. There's another Pharaoh that the leaders of the world are preparing to come. And, I'd, and many researchers believe that the very first Pharaoh in Egypt was Nimrod. It was his uncle and, and his father. It was Cush and Mizraim that built Egypt. And they believe that Nimrod was the first pharaoh. So the son of perdition is coming back to be the pharaoh of the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it's this pharaoh spirit once again. I think that's why in Freemasonry there's so much uh, involved. And it's all about Egypt. It's all about, it's all Egyptian stuff. Because they're, they're building worldwide a pharaoh system. And so when God begins to judge it, you're going to see the same uh, type of uh, prophetic symbolism and actions that you do and the whole Passover story and what what God did with the plagues he when you when you look at it, God stripped all the wealth that was created on the backs of his people from Egypt before they left. 
when you look at the the seals, now the the, the scroll of destiny, and I, I've taught on this before. This is a secret hidden plan of God that uh, there's seven seals because it's perfectly sealed that the enemy has no idea what's there. Only Jesus can open it. But with each seal, he began stripping the authority that that Satan has over the earth. Isn't that great? <laughs> and, and the repercussions is, you know, Satan has come down because he's angry because he knows his time is short. And then after that, we have the judgments of God being poured out. We have the wrath of God being poured out. All of it judging not only uh, the world leaders that have aligned themselves, but the principalities and the powers, because Jesus is taking the nations back. He's taking Mm -hmm. the planet back, okay? And so when you look at the plagues in Egypt were not just plagues to get Pharaoh to let God's people go. Almighty God was judging the gods of Egypt, and the very first one was the, the, the plague of turning the Nile into blood. Not only did the Nile turn into blood, but every spring, every well, every source of water except in Goshen, where God's people were. And when you look at this, Hepi was the, the spirit of the Nile. And it's also uh, the Nile floodwaters are connected to the Egyptian gods Sadpet and, and Satet. But what I really found interesting is his very first salvo, went after Osiris because the Nile was considered his bloodstream Mm. and God made his bloodstream bleed. (laughs) And so the, the ultimate big God over Egypt, God did a salvo with that very first one. The second one is frogs. And it's interesting when you begin looking at this manifestation of frogs, there was a a goddess in Egypt called uh, Hikwet which was the God of birth and the wife of the creator. Uh, she was depicted with a frog's head and a woman's body. And also in the court of, of happy uh, was, as mentioned, there are crocodile gods. There are many frog goddesses. Uh, in fact, the, in fact, the primordial gods, Nun, Kuk, and He are all depicted as men with frog's heads. So this was a direct judgment against many of the gods that they worshiped. Mm. And that's a horrible thought. Didn't that give you a, Terrible mental picture of Worship people with frogs. Yeah. Uh, the next one is is lice, and this this goes after their their god Geb, which brought forth bounty from the land. So from the land he was supposed to bring forth fruit and vegetation, and what the land brought forth were lice. And it's a slap in the face to all. Each one of these is also a slap in the face to all the gods of Egypt, because not one of them could stop it from happening no they couldn't boy they gave it their best too <laughs> absolutely and there there are other gods uh there was the horse in the child form that's part of the, the god of, of healing and that it, it couldn't bring healing uh, the fourth one was swarms now one of the things i found interesting about this is we always relate to flies any swarming bug because it just says swarms so it could have been swarms uh, and <laughs> all kinds of bad stuff and uh one of the ones that they also suspect was a part of this that was sacred. You know, you always see the, the scarab, uh, beetle. Well, that's also not, Mary, that's also known by another name. It's called the dung beetle. In fact, some of their gods had a dung beetle head. So a beetle that lives off of feces that its greatest treasure is to roll it up in a little ball and take it and put it in this thing was one of their gods. And they're, I've seen they're, that on... Um Headstones, too, Yeah, when people are buried. I think it was mostly Eastern Star people I saw that on. Why yeah, it was, it was the Egyptian god uh, Kepper was depicted as a man with a dung beetle's head. And so they had swarms of everything that can swarm imaginable. And here God's judging it. Then you had the disease of the livestock. Uh, cattle were considered, were highly valued, and they were considered sacred. The Egyptians worshipped many animals, and among them was the bull and heifer. Remember the golden calf? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so there was the the creation god, Peta, P-T-A-H, and some of these are kind of hard to pronounce, uh, represented as the living bull. And Apis bull was very sacred, and when it died, the Egyptians mourned as though they had lost the pharaoh. Hmm. And so I mean this hitting them one after another. In fact, one of the mother goddesses, Hathor, is depicted 
as a cowed head goddess with a female body with cow-like features, and she was and uh, she was depicted with a pair of horns with a solar disc between them, and she was symbolically the mother of Pharaoh. And so God goes after that. Then you have the boils, and you, this this is a slap in the face to all of their healing deities. Mm-hmm. That they that there's no way that God could stop them. You know, those are painful. Like, and they were covered with them, right? From head to toe. And I mean, this is not this not only goes after uh, some of their healing gods, but Osiris, uh, as well as Isis, and all these gods that couldn't stop it. And then you had the hail, and this is actually a slap in the face not only to Nut, which was uh, the storm god. But none of their gods could stop these things. And uh, just over and over again, God is judging the principalities and powers that built Egypt. Okay? You have the locusts. Again, the gods are silent. Uh, the hail had devastated. Now the locust strip bare what was left. And then you have darkness. Mary, this goes after Ra, mm-hmm. the sun god that he couldn't shine. And what's what's interesting about this darkness when you actually read the text, if you lit a torch, the torch would not cast light. Nothing cast light except the candles or whatever they had in, in the land of Goshen. It was such darkness. That, thick that as syrup. <laughs> thick as syrup. And this goes after many gods. In fact, there's, there's a version of Ra, Amun-Ra. So this, this is going after all the versions of him uh, within Egypt. And one of the things that um, Derek Gilbert brought out, there's actually a 10th judgment. Remember when the children of Israel, they had, they're, they're at the Red Sea, and God had the, you know, the pillar of fire to stop Pharaoh. But he had them actually turn their back to the Red Sea, and they faced this mountain. Derek Gilbert, in, in his research, had found out that was the original god of Egypt. It was Baal Peor. They that, were facing him off. <laughs> and and he, was, he was not only a, a storm god, he was a water god. And then God's people turn around and they walk across dry land. And the Pharaoh, his entire army that he sent after the people of God, were drowned right in front of the water mm-hmm. god. That was absolutely helpless. Yeah, couldn't save them at all. Helpless to do anything. Yeah, and that's that's the way it is today. These these people that have set themselves up as gods, they aren't going to be able to help anybody, including themselves. The principalities and powers in the days ahead, they're going to be, they're going to begin losing power. Uh, Jesus is going to begin systematically stripping their power over the nations. There is a pivotal place, Mary, in the Book of Revelation, where it says. Now the kingdoms of this earth have become the kingdoms of God and of his Christ, which is a complete reversal of what happened at the Tower of Babel when God divorced humanity because they had rebelled against him and gave them over to these principalities and powers that had rebelled against God. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think Jesus at the transfiguration, this, this, was, this was the ultimate salvo. He went up to Mount Hermon, which was ground zero for so many things. And when you really take... Mount Hermon apart, it's even more than just the watchers. And he transfigures. All that royal dignity and everything that he had left, his his divine privileges that he had left, his glory that he had left to take human flesh manifests on him before his death, burial, and resurrection on Mount Hermon. You know, that had to set up a almost like an atomic warhead in the spirit realm. And he was saying, he stood on top of their mountain and said, I'm taking it all back. And they thought killing him on the cross was going to stop it. And what it did is it facilitated it Mm -hmm. because they didn't have a clue that thousands of years before there was a guy named Abraham that was willing to offer up his only begotten son, his son of promise, on an altar for God. And Almighty God came and he offered his son, his Passover, the lamb that Abram prophesied when he was going up that mountain. He said, God will provide a lamb. And Mary, every time since that time, 
every time a shofar has gone up to the lips of a Hebrew, that shofar gave out a cry looking for the Lamb of God. And then John the Baptist stood on the banks of the Jordan and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Jesus is our Passover. Yes, he, is. he is the unleavened bread. Now, guys, in this season, we need to make sure that his blood is over the doorpost, that there's nothing in our lives that his blood has not covered. That's right. And one of the things that Mary and I do, because, you know, as, as in this whole sanctification process is a lifetime thing that God walks us through. And he'll remind us of stuff, maybe that even bitter root judgments or something that we even made as kids. Uh, as, the, as the Holy Spirit's working on us, he'll bring something up, and so we'll plead the blood of Jesus over it and ask him to forgive us. But one of the things Mary and I have learned is, God, even the things that you haven't dealt with yet that uh, the Holy Spirit has not brought to memory yet, I plead the blood of Jesus over those, and I ask that the yes. blood of Jesus would cover those so the enemy could not use them. Yes. And, and then re- it, God would reveal it to you. Yeah, and the, that you would reveal it to me as your spirit prepares yeah. me for it. And you know, even just in our day-to-day walk, Mike, I've done this. I've There's situations that'll, that'll happen, and, and you just try to think, well, we'll just keep peace. We'll do whatever we can to kind of smooth things over. But you know, you'll stuff stuff in. Yeah. You will stuff it. You will stuff it. You will stuff it just to kind of keep things smooth and and especially if you're dealing with people that don't deal well with confrontation. You just, you just stuff it, and you stuff it. Well, eventually that's going to come to the surface. And so that's, that's one of the things that I've found out every year God kind of helps me do this time of year is anything that I've stuffed that's in there because it's, it's like a splinter, you know. It's in there, and you can't get healed of it till it's out. And, and, and pressing down emotions and pressing down you know, aggravation and stuff like that, it'll eventually pop up. And so this time of year, a lot of times God will, will um, bring bring things up in me so I can deal with them. Because a lot, I mean, I, I can go back from the time I was a kid, just front conscious memories, nothing that was hidden, and just how I had to deal with situations. Because in my in my family, there was no expressing an opinion. It was It was, you do what I tell you, and don't ask any questions. And if you dare to say anything, you're you're in for it. So yeah, mine too. You'll have a lot of things just shoved down in there, and it's almost like a volcano. It's down there bubbling, bubbling, and then then it may take just a, one more thing that happens, one more pressure point, and man, you that thing will blow. And so you know, those are the the type of things. Don't don't get beat up if something like that happens. It's not it's not like you've lost your sanctification or something. It's just you're at the end of something that needs to be dealt with. And, and whether it's on a, a person, you know, some things you can't, there are things in my life that, that the people aren't even around that I've had aggravation with or, or things that have happened. So I have to let God heal it. I give it to him. Yeah. And then there's other situations you may just have to try to resolve with a, a spouse or family members or whatever. But, but you have to because that's the kind of stuff that will give you high blood pressure and it's the kind of stuff that will, you know, hard on your body. Yeah. I think this is a season to uh, that God is letting the leaven come up. And not only that, I, th- I think, you know, when, when they had the Passover supper, they were told to eat all the lamb. That means every aspect of what the lamb of God has done for us. Uh, healing of our bodies. The book of Psalms tells us that when they departed out of Egypt, there was not a feeble one among them. This, this is a time of healing. This is a time for, for God to give revelation on, on how to get our health back and how to get our, our, our minds back solid the way they mm-hmm. need to be and dealing with emotional things. It, it's all there if we follow the Spirit of God. Uh, sometimes it's not pretty, but you know what? Life's not pretty. It, it's, as long as we're in this earth, we're going to have, it, it's, it's, you know, uh, heaven is going to be heaven. We're not there yet. Well, and you know, there there's so many people, Mike, in the Hebraic Roots movement that, that actually go through the, um, going through the house, getting bacon soda out, getting things like that, um, when it, it's much more practical and to just address the issues that you have. You oh. know, Jesus, Jesus fulfilled this, and, you know, people put so much significance on you've got to eat unleavened bread, you've got to do this, or, or you're being disobedient. But they don't offer a sacrifice, do they? No. They don't do a wave offering. So why is some of it applicable 
and all of it's not applicable. It's because Jesus fulfilled it. And then looking at the spiritual application, I, th- I think that's what we miss in so much because all of that was a prophetic, uh, prophetic symbolism that we can apply to our lives to apply spiritually, because it's it's the it's the yeast of Babylon on the inside that's going to destroy your life. Yeah, not, that's right. Not something that's a can on and, the shelf. And we need to stay focused on this time of year on not those those things that are just a practice that people do. Let's let's stay focused on the spiritual aspect of it. That at any moment. You have you can call on the name of Jesus. Yes. At any moment, you don't have to go through a ritual. You don't have to go. He made it to where He's there for us. He's there. He's the high priest. He's He he's is easily to touched by our infirmities. <laughs> he knows what it means to get mad. He knows mm-hmm. what it means to uh, to be sad. I mean, uh, you know, I, I looked. There's there's a this a short story, and sometimes you'll miss over it in the Gospels. And it was after he got the news that John the Baptist. Had been, be, you know, had been killed, and so he withdraws himself, you know. Just and can you blame him? Okay, okay. My my cousin, the greatest prophet Israel has ever known, has just been killed by the evil Herod, and I just need some time alone. Mm-hmm. I need some time back up in the woods to to to, to pray and, and, and to grieve and everything. And the Bible says that the the throngs continued to follow him. But then it said he was moved by compassion. Mm-hmm. That his compassion for us was greater than, than his the grief own need, yeah. that he was going through at the time. Well, and he's still that way today. Yeah, he is. He's easily moved with compassion. And that's why I know he's hearing the cries of his people, Mike. And I, I don't have any doubt that, they're, that we're going to go through some turbulent times. I, I've never been able to see how God could um, make a way around you know, the insane deficit that we have and, and the problems that we have with the, the dollar. And so I, I think that there, there's definitely going to be problems with money. Um, I, I think that God in this process is going to take America and use it for his purposes. I, I still believe that. I know I've heard others that, that believe the same thing. They've heard the same thing. But it's going to be some shaking on the way there. And, and what I'm expecting is... God to begin supernatural, begin to move supernaturally to take care of his people. Well, I, I, I believe that with just, all my heart. Just like there was a Goshen. Yeah. You know, that he had to, he had to really do some stuff <laughs> to deliver them from Egypt. And he's going to really have to do some stuff to deliver his people out of this slavery that we're in that people don't even know we're in. I think they're waking up to it, though. If you, if oh, you ever look back and see the changes they made in the government, um, and what that you you would see how they made us slaves. Yeah. And it's just and they and they did you know just trying to keep everybody happy. They're gonna um, keep them satisfied with ball games and and this and this party and and that and just you just make it through the week till you get to Friday. That's where TGIF. You know, thank God it's Friday came from. And so so people are gonna we're gonna experience some stuff. But I even believe I've always thought this. I've always thought for the remnant. That God's going to provide good food. Yes, that's why I think we're going to have good, healthy food at that conferences. Is I, and I think we'll be feeding people that that need food. I that's what I think. You know, God, God has to raise up His people to show forth His power. Yes, because no matter what happened, no no matter what natural disaster would happen or what God would do to judge, there would always be some some explanation, unless you've got somebody there telling you what's going on. A, a prophet, somebody that says, "This is what God's going to do. This is this is what you better do to get ready," because that's what that's what God wants. He wants His people to be the shining example of look at what our God does for us. You've got a God that if you step out of line, He's going to destroy you. We've got a God that is right here beside us, making the path clear for us, supporting us, our refuge, everything we need. He's the all sufficient one. Sometimes even helping us in spite of ourselves. Yes. Because of his mercy. Yeah. So thankful for his mercy. But, so, you know, we're, he's, he's shaking things so that his people will react. And, and we've got a responsibility during this. This isn't just, oh, we just sit here and just see what happens. We have to raise up against this evil. There is such evil. The things that they are trying to take into the schools, 
the things that are being done uh, beyond abortion after babies are born, I mean, these, these are such horrendous acts that anybody ought to shake and shiver over. No, it is. And, and not that these things haven't been going on in secret for years, but you know what? They've got so arrogant, they've just let it bubble to the, to the surface. They're, de- they're just so used to getting their way, but what they don't understand is God always prepares a people that will cry out against it and will stand against it and can, can walk in the authority that Jesus gave us and take authority over the kingdom of darkness and say, not one more step. Not one more step in Jesus' name. You know, one of the things that uh, jumped out in the news the other day that really took me aback was they said that Ukraine was the wheat bowl of the world. Mm -hmm. That used to be America. But when you look at all these biospheres, the (laughs) the biospheres that the UN has bought that says nothing Mm -hmm. can be grown, they've taken away our farmland, and how many millions of acres is either owned by China or owned by Bill Gates? Uh, well, Steph was looking at uh, some pictures of um, Micah's grandparents when they were young, and they lived in Oklahoma, and they, they grew wheat there, and it was huge wheat, like big, <laughs> as tall as they were. And so we've got land here in the center of the country. We could grow wheat. And I, and I do think there's going to be a shortage of those things. You, you can't have a war in a nation and it not affect the crops. No. You can't, they can't get out and, and plant crops if they're in the middle of a war. So think of, think of those things. You know, that's, that's why it's important when you do have, have some extra to be watching your budget. And, and I, you know, when, you, when you're just living paycheck to paycheck, you have to make a budget, guys. You have to sit down and write your bills out. You have to see how much you're going to have to pay for gas and see how much you've got for grocery money. And then see, start watching those sale ads and, and watching some clearance. Sometimes they'll have clearance things. Right now, if you can buy an extra thing of flour, that's a good idea. Yeah. I remember a friend of ours told a story that during the good times, God began having him basically build a storehouse in his house. And he had built it up for two or three years. And then things happened in his family. And I mean, financially, they were devastated. And he's sitting there praying, God, what am I going to do? God, what am I going to do? And God says, go get a couple of grocery bags that you had gotten from Walmart. He said, go downstairs and go shopping. And during that hard time, it was, it was almost like Joseph, you know, storing up uh-huh. in Egypt that he had enough down there because he had stored up for two, three, four, five years things that they could use and, and rotated canned goods and different things. That's right. You need to sit down, guys, and make a list. Like in case things get get hard, um, things that that you would use that you may not even think about. Like make sure you got a thing of alcohol. Make sure you got some jugs of bleach. Things that that you just take for granted you're going to go to the store. You know, there might be shortages. They may... They may try to, to back up these these um, freighters again, and and there may not be anything for them to ship at times. So yeah. I, I've always thought that we're in the best place you can be in the middle of the United States because of the climate here. It's You have about everything you need. You know, I always get extra pineapple, things that we can't grow around here. Um, but it's it's a good place to live, and, and you can look at what you're – your area has. Yeah. And, you know, don't get overwhelmed. But if, if you can just spend $5 a week, mm-hmm. $10 a week, just setting back extra to begin building that storehouse. God knows where we are. And, if, right. we're, and if we're faithful and obedient, that's one of the things that uh, God kept bringing that scripture back to me. And it, it, it's, it says, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we we can be obedient but we don't necessarily are willing or one way or the other and god says you know get your heart right and and just some of these things are just done step by step that's right and it's and you can just do a little at a time you know while we can right now you can you can get a little extra if you get a tax return you know that would be a lot of times people you know buy something that's not really necessary well this this year it might be worth your while to just, you know, to stock up on some things. Yeah. And just follow the spirit of God. Mm-hmm. God He'll lead you. Uh, he has God us every, faithful. every time. God is faithful. Uh, the Lord of the harvest in many ways, not only for the souls of men, but the Lord of the harvest. Almighty God is the one who gives almighty God is the one who takes away. Mm-hmm. 
Almighty God is the one who's going to judge. And in the midst of judgment, he can take care of his people. He oh, always right. has. The biblical pattern is there. He always has. He always will. And we need to have confidence in the greatness of our God. That's right. That he can bring down the evil while not only sustaining, but I believe causing his people to flourish. And when you look at Passover, you see that. Yes. They walked out a people that were made whole. Yeah, there were no sick among them. That were made free. He and provided fir- manna. <laughs> and the first time we see the wealth of the wicked was laid up for the just. Mm-hmm. And they walked away with the wealth of Egypt. And I believe, I believe if we seek God and ask him to show us any doors that are open where the enemy has some kind of legal right to steal from us, because he had a ton of legal right to steal from us, didn't he, hon? Oh, yeah. And he stole every penny he could till we, till we saw, till God revealed to us all these things. But if you've got your doors covered with the blood, you can believe that you, that you can prosper in the midst of famine, yeah. that God will make a way. And you know it's a, it's a time for community. For people to come together and, and, you know, you could, one family might have potatoes, another one has something else, and you can come together and, you know, make a beef stew or something. There's all kinds of things that God can have you do. And I, I do think he's going to bring like-minded people together. And I think that, that he's got a plan. And I, I don't feel, uh, I'm, I've talked to a lot of people that are just really nervous about what's going on. I don't feel nervous at all. Um I know that whatever's coming, God's going to make a way. He's going to fulfill his promises to us, and he is faithful, and he never fails you. He never fails you. And, you know, if there's situations in your life you've thought that God left you or abandoned you, or, you know, I had times that I was going through that too, but he didn't. He was there all the time. He was working. Uh, that's, his, that's his will for your life, that, that you would have your needs met that you would fulfill your destiny, that he planned before the beginning of time. And he has that plan for each one of you. Don't let Satan make you feel insignificant. Don't let him during this time, he'll try to beat you up so that you can't stand in the proper place to give God glory and honor on this Passover. And I I just pray that God make a way for you to have a wonderful family and friends um, that can be around your table. You know, we, we just take grape juice and and crackers and and Lots do the Lord's, if we can find yeah it. because there's a there's a teaching that Mike does with that where it's striped and pierced and um we just have a wonderful meal and and you know it's just so such a time to be thankful for every good thing that he's given us for health for restoration for protection and i just pray that your homes are filled with that good friends good family Wonderful, healthy food to restore your body. You know, the interesting thing, and I want to end this with with, uh, this fact about Passover. It wasn't the worthiness of the people that lived in the house. You know, there were actually Egyptians that followed the same thing and put blood over the the doorpost and survived that ended up leaving with the children of Israel. It wasn't the worthiness of the residents it was the obedience and it was the power of what the lamb did for them and they had to believe right they They became uh god fearers is that what you call god fearers (laughs) well what's interesting is at mount sinai they they were basically integrated into israel and they had to become they were considered as if they were native born they were they were brought in and which was really a neat thing but guys it's the lamb is worthy and because he is worthy, he has shown his love to us and has made us worthy yes. to receive everything that yes. he has done for us. Yes. Now, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we break the lie that we're not worthy to receive the fullness of what Jesus has done for us. We call it out a lie. We break the power of it. We command those spirits that speak those things. You be silent in the name of Jesus. And Father, we speak the truth that Jesus' blood is enough, that yes, his price yes. is enough, and that he Thank loved you, Jesus. Thank you. us enough in all the mess that we were in to give our life for us. So that the Bible even says that what enabled him to endure the cross was the hope that was set before him, and that hope was us. He saw each one of us 
and said, I'm willing to die for you to set you free so that you could be forever with me and that I could take care of you and I could be your shepherd, I could be your king. And Lord, we just ask that the Holy Spirit would raise up big within every one of your remnant. Heal us where we need to be healed. Correct us where we need to be corrected. Let us get the leaven out of our hearts and out of our minds so the, the enemy has nothing there to work with and that everywhere he tries to go in our life, he runs smack dab into the blood of Jesus and the Spirit of God. And Father, we just thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. In the Shinar Directive, we journey down the Luciferian rabbit hole to discover the matrix of darkness that has engulfed our planet. In the Shirith Imperative, we dug deeper to unearth the power source of hell itself and how the body of Christ can labor to impede its functioning in the earth and lay the groundwork for revival. Now it is time to unveil the mysteries of both the priesthood of the kingdom of God and the priesthood of darkness. Until these mysteries are understood, God's remnant cannot realize their purpose or be released with heaven's power to overcome the agenda of the denizens of the second heaven. The kingdom priesthood is a training manual for the remnant to discover their priesthood, their purpose, and their service to Almighty God. In the pages of this remnant manual, you will discover what Adam experienced in the first few moments of life and how those desires were written into the DNA of humanity. Revelations of what the Almighty meant when he told Adam and Eve to replenish the earth. Who were the first priests of the kingdom of God in the Bible? And who was the first priest of darkness? What was the knowledge of the tree of good and evil offering the first family of humanity? How we all share the same calling as Abel. The reality of the Principality's wars and how it is influencing the world today. As believers, how we are to function as both a priest and a tabernacle. The real purpose of the fire of God how to carry the name of God in the earth with dignity and power. How the priesthood is essential for the releasing of end time warriors in the last days. How to flow in the sevenfold anointing of the Holy Spirit to represent Messiah. The kingdom priesthood is a call for the remnant to receive the fire of God and become the assembly that the gates of hell cannot overcome. Get your copy today at Amazon.com or KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.